Welcome everybody to another Vitality 101 webinar. Today uh, we are going to be looking at the Vitality line of enabled products. Uh, most of these are hardware bundles that we've put together with our hardware vendor partners such as Patton and I have a couple people from Patton on the phone. I've got Joshua and Tyler here in case there's some technical questions that you need answered. Hopefully this is going to give you a little more insight into some of the products that we have and ways that you can add more functionality to existing customers and pick up some new customers. Uh, first off, why should you get any of our enabled products? Well, they provide interoperability with legacy systems. Uh, some work with legacy phone systems, others with uh, fax machines, others with Microsoft Link. So you'll, you'll get to see the, the different products that we have that are all under our enabled line of products. It's going to allow you to open up some new business opportunities, make yourself some more money, resell some new services, and provide new features and functionality to existing customers, even if they don't have an IP PBX just yet. So you can get them started in the VoIP world and then move them on to PBXs and other products down the road. The first one we're going to look at is SIP Enable. This is our first of the enabled line of products. And this is a hardware device that allows you con to connect SIP trunks to legacy PBX systems. It's going to provide lower call costs and allow you to add additional functionality to those systems. Once they're using Vitality SIP trunks, you can have SMS messaging, our VFAX service, directory listings with white, yellow page, 411 directory listings, E911. So all those benefits that you get from being on our VoIP service, you can now provide those services to customers who are on older phone systems that only support analog phone lines or digital PRI circuits. And using the Patton products, we can then take that and convert that to a SIP trunk that can connect to Vitality. So there's three different products in the lineup, SIP Enable 4, 15, and 30. The 4 is for analog PBXs, supports four FXS and four voice channels. You can stack those and add more functionality if someone has six, eight, or 10 lines. Usually once you get above that, they've got a PRI circuit coming in with either 15 or 30 channels. So we have options to fit both of those. Now this is, you know, the initial price point may seem a little high, but when you look at the cost savings by using VoIP trunks, this is typically about a five month to six month ROI before now this starts paying for itself in, in terms of the overall cost. Because you're saving money on those VoIP calls, you're gonna absorb this cost very, very quickly. Plus being able to add all those additional functions and features that they're not gonna have with just a standard PRI. So as we go along, if you guys have any questions on any of the products or how they work or anything, feel free to just pop a, a question in the chat box and one of us will answer it for you. Uh, we're going to kind of run through this like we normally do just so you get a, a good overview of the different products that we have. To get SIP Enable up and working, we've created a configuration tool. So you go to vitality.com slash SIP Enable, you enter in a, a very small amount of information and it will put out a configuration file that you then upload to the device and you're up and running in really just a few seconds versus trying to configure one of these things by hand, which is very difficult. Uh, Joshua or, or Tyler, there's a question here, is call transfer disconnect supported by the Patton devices? Joshua, I'll let you take that one. 
Yes, it is. Um, so there's two different ways that we can handle that, whether it's going to be SIP or, or on the ISDN side. Um, through SIP, it's obviously going to be the, the refer message so that we're going to make sure that we're pulled out of the uh, of the communication when there's a call transfer. And then if it's over ISDN, we're using a protocol called ETC, excuse me, ECT, which is Extended Call Transfer. Um, if you want to have uh, a trace of what that looks like, if you want to go into more detail, um, I'll make sure you guys have my email address and we can take that uh, offline because we can talk a long time about just that functionality. Does that answer your question, Blake? The next product is very similar to SIP Enable, but it's designed specifically to work with Microsoft Link. If you didn't know it already, Microsoft Link, uh, being a Microsoft product, is a little non-standard when it comes to their SIP trunks. They actually use TCP instead of UDP, so we utilize a SmartNode 5200 to convert our SIP trunks from UDP to TCP so that our SIP trunks can work directly with Microsoft Link. Again, all the same benefits as SIP Enable. You have low call costs, all the additional functionality, SMS, VFAQ, the directory listings, and E911, all in a very easy to configure package. Now, if you're not completely familiar with some of the other products uh, that I mentioned here, VFAQ and SMS messaging, you can go back to our blog and you can see some of the other webinars that we've done on these particular uh, features, SMS and VFAX. Those are some really great products that can really help you sell more features into your customers. Because when it comes to selling, you know, the easiest thing to do is to sell more to your existing customers. So by adding additional functionality, you're increasing that value that you're then reselling to your customers. Or if you're the IT person in a company here, then you can sell that into your company and provide you know, more productivity and features to your employees. Link Enable has a wide variety of uh, options here from four channels all the way up to 48 channels. I've got the MSRP listed here, so you can uh, see the kind of the price points at the different levels. It's actually you know, not as bad as uh, some people would think it would be on the pricing, so we can really get you going with Microsoft Link. I don't know how many of you are working with Microsoft Link today, but they're certainly making some inroads in the market, and uh, especially on the higher end. So it's a really good way of getting in with some of those larger enterprise customers and getting them on SIP trunks and, again, selling them on all those additional services. Well, normally you guys are really uh, full of questions here, and uh, we only had one so far. Kind of surprised. Uh, Fax Enable is another one of our enabled products. Uh, this is a truly reliable fax over IP solution. This allows you to connect to any regular fax machine. It does not do fax over SIP or T38. It's actually an HTTPS protocol for sending the faxes into the data center. It provides inbound and outbound fax archiving. So you get a lot of additional features on top of the just being able to utilize a fax machine. Now, if you're familiar with our VFAX product, VFAX is a cloud-based fax platform. You can do fax to email, email to fax, web-based uh, send and receive. There's a whole portal for managing your faxes. Fax Enable kind of takes that to another level by actually being able to utilize a fax machine. So there's no learning curve, there's no special things you have to do. You literally plug it in, plug your fax machine in, and it will start working. In the purchase, the uh, pricing model for fax enable, there's two different models. There's a flat out purchase model for $109 for the device, and then you play, pay the standard VFAX rates of $299 a month for the DID, plus three cents a minute, for inbound and outbound faxing, or our new subscription model, which is a $35 setup and then $24.95 a month for unlimited faxing. Uh, this is an extremely popular uh, product right now. A lot of people putting this in. 
because if you look at that pricing model, especially on the subscription, your typical analog phone line is going to be running, uh, depending on where you are in the country, on the low end, probably $40 a month, on the high end, up to about $60 a month. So very quickly, you can go in and generally save 50% off somebody's fax bill. So that's a really huge uh, discount for people. If you've got customers, law firms and stuff that have three, four fax machines, and you can start saving them $100 or $200 a month right off their phone bill, you are a superstar to those customers. So uh, I highly recommend you pick up one of these for yourself, try it out, see how well it works, and um, you know, start selling them to your customers. Tim, great question. He's asking, will this work for an alarm or fire line? The answer is no. Uh, and that's because it's not doing uh, the fax codes, it's not doing audio, it's not doing any audio over the line. It's taking the fax data into the device, transcoding it into data, and sending that data over an HTTPS connection into our fax platform. So this is a very specific device for faxing. Uh, some people have luck with alarms and fire lines when using like a Cisco uh, SPA 112, but it's uh, kind of hit or miss for some people. It's something to try if you're looking for that. But generally, when you're looking for alarm, fire lines, uh, credit card machine lines, those are going to still require an analog uh, phone line to be in. There's uh, the reliability factor just really isn't quite there when you're switching over to using an ATA. Hey, by the way, uh, the, the patent gateways can do that as well. Uh, oh, why, why don't you expand on that a little bit, Tyler? Josh, from a technical point of view, that would probably be a better response. I just know our, our okay, gateways so, can do this, the Cisco devices. Um, it, in addition to the SKUs that uh, we were presenting here with Vitality Patent, of course, has, has a wide range. So we have analog uh, voice over IP gateways that are capable of doing the alarm, whether it's you know, a fire trip or other, whether it's modem communication or even if it's something that needs to be a nailed-up connection like a leased line. Uh, we have analog SKUs specifically for that. If you get in touch with um, with us here at Patent or go through Vitality, we can, we can take that offline and expand exactly what your application is. Our our analog port ranges range from 2 to 32 ports. So um, if you have something out of the SKUs presented, just let us know, and, and we'll make sure that, that we find the product right for you. Uh, we just don't want to overload you with everything we have. So you can take that offline with Vitality, and uh, all of our SKUs do work with Vitality, so Chuck can just flawlessly. Thanks for clarifying that, Joshua. Uh, Thomas is asking... On Faxnable, can you still use the portal? And the answer is mostly. Um, with Faxnable, you have access to the fax portal, so you can see the inbound and outbound faxes, but you don't have the ability to send and receive faxes from the portal. Uh, and that's because the the pricing model on Faxnable with that unlimited faxing uh, is really self-limiting by the number of faxes that a, a fax machine can send or receive in any one day. So you have the some of the benefits of VFAX in the portal with the archiving, but you don't have the send and receive from the portal that you do with just a, a regular VFAX account. Hopefully that clears that up. Um, again, the pricing model for this. And um, moving on to our, our last product here, which we call Talk Enable. Uh, again, this is using another patent device. This is their new Smart Node Branch Exchange, which is basically a, a nice, powerful CPU uh, running in a very small appliance. It runs Windows. It's built around the 3CX PBX software, uh, which is a really nice piece of software for running a, a business on. has a lot of cool features. It's got you know everything that you'd expect: ring groups and call queues and uh, 
uh, paging and you know, everything that you would want in a phone system is built into the 3CX software. Now, typically, you're going to put this into offices up to about 50 employees. Uh, uh, Joshua, do you want to talk about the, the specs on the, the hardware there for a moment? Sure thing. Thanks, Gary. So uh, looking at the, the patent SMBX, it's running a D525 Atom processor. So that runs at 1.8 gigahertz with dual core and hyper threading. So it's going to easily be able to handle that load that he's talking about for offices up to 50 employees. And then it's got four gigs of RAM. And in the 3CX installation where the RAM usually is needed is for a registration happening at the same time. So that transcoding and that calls per second is going to use the processor, but um, all the different uh, registered devices you have is where the RAM comes in. So for, for a 50-employee office, this device is going to be just absolutely perfect. And the, the major advantage is, like Kerry said, it's very small. It comes with a – or, excuse me, it, it works with a VESA wall mount as well. Cooling really isn't much of an issue. It can go on a shelf in a rack. Uh, you don't need any clearance above as long as you have something on the side. So really, this is going to be an excellent, um, an excellent source. I see here, Thomas, you have a question about the hard drive or an SSD. Right now, this model does have a hard drive because as we were doing some testing with SSDs, the constant writing of the CDR shortened the life uh, pretty significantly. Uh, it is possible to, to get an SSD in here if that's absolutely needed, but uh, there's really no speed limitations on the hard drive for what BCX is doing running in that user space, so it, it wasn't needed, and it seemed to shorten the life of the product. So what size hard drive is in that? It's a 250 gig. Okay. So that's going to be, you know, quite sufficient for most users, unless you're probably doing a lot of call recording. And in that case, one of the things that I've always recommended just from a, a performance point of view is to have the call recordings recorded to the local machine and then set up a, a little batch file that then copies those over, you know, once a day or once an hour, depending on your, your load, to a USB hard drive. Uh, you can't do the recording straight to a USB hard drive. It just won't have quite the, the throughput for it. But if you record to the local hard drive and then you have a script that moves those files to a, a USB hard drive, you can uh, make sure that you have plenty of hard drive space available if you're doing recordings. Uh, can talk enable be placed directly behind a firewall? Or is it public IP required? Now, actually, we highly recommend that you put it behind a firewall and only forward the ports that you need for the VoIP trunks. And really, even uh, if you don't have any remote users and you're just having VoIP trunks to Vitality, even lock the, that firewall down to only accepting those ports from the Vitality IP addresses so that you, you take as many precautions as you can. I, I think it's always a good thing to put your phone system behind as much security as possible. You can put it right on the open internet, but remember it is a Windows machine, so uh, I'm not going to recommend that. Uh, you know, you have all the built-in security with Windows these days, which is pretty good, but I would have that turned on. I'd have a firewall in front of it. I'd lock that firewall down to just the ports, just the IPs. If you have remote employees, just their IPs coming in. So I, I would take as many precautions as possible with a phone system and putting it behind a good firewall. Um, Joshua, do you want to uh, comment on that as well? You probably agree with me on that. Yeah, I agree 100%. Putting a PBX, whether it's Linux-based or Windows-based, on a public IP is just dangerous. People see that the port 5060 is open, they know what it is, and they're just attacked maliciously. Um, just to give a point uh, of reference, I had this up on a public IP on, on Friday night, just running some tests and forgot about it over the weekend. I came back on Monday, and the entire thing was completely infested and destroyed. Somebody had got in through uh through an injection in, in the um, in the web interface. So absolutely put it behind a firewall or even uh, an enterprise session border device like some of Patton's offerings, but just keep it protected at all costs. Uh, let's see. Marvin, good question. How do you handle 3CX Android uh, 
clients remote on Wi-Fi. Uh, well, the, uh, if you're familiar with 3CX, they have their own uh, soft phone for Android and iOS, and it works really, really well, actually. And there's a feature built into 3CX as well as their smartphone clients that's called the 3CX Tunnel. And if you enable that, then instead of going over port 5060 and you know a handful of different uh, uh, RTP ports, it does a single IP or a single port connection, and it works really well over NAT or in weird situations. I've had a lot of really good success with uh, the smartphone client for 3CX using the, the 3CX tunnel. So it's, it's very easy to configure within 3CX, and it's also very easy to con configure on those soft phone devices. Uh, it's also available for Windows. So there's Windows, iOS, and Android 3CX phones that are designed to work really, really well with uh, 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 hours. Joshua? Doctor. Sorry about that, Carrie. I just realized I wasn't muted. <laughs> All right. So that's uh, Marvin. That's how I deal with 3CX with Android or iOS clients. Is just use their soft phone with the 3CX tunnel enabled, and that'll really get you going. Uh, it does not have uh, this question from Nathan. It does not have a VPN built in, but you could install a VPN on it uh, using. The 3CX tunnel is, it's not an encrypted connection, it's just a, a slight modification to the existing protocol to make it easier to transverse NAT situations. So it, it's, I would not consider it a, a VPN per se, but you could install a VPN on the, on the firewall or even on the SNNBX itself and connect in over something like OpenVPN or uh, any of those particular products. So it's an entirely possible to use a VPN. I generally don't recommend uh, having voice go over a VPN because you have that extra overhead of the encryption, but if it is a requirement for you, it, it's certainly uh, you know worth looking into. Let's look at the pricing on uh, talk enable. Now, I didn't put together a whole matrix of the different pricing options because there are a ton of different pricing options depending on exactly what you're looking for. Right now, we're doing a kind of a bundle deal that includes uh, four SNOM 710 uh, IP phones. So you get the NBX or the SNMBX, you get four phones, and you get the eight concurrent call license for 3CX for about $1,200. And then that can ramp all the way up to as, as many phones as you want to put on it and whatever license that you need to support the number of concurrent calls that you have. So you really need to uh, call us here at Vitality get a hold of our sales department, just sales at vitality.com or, or call in and they can help you out with the pricing. Uh, Jesse, is there a web page set up for TalkNable and FaxNable? Uh, well, FaxNable doesn't, let me start there. FaxNable doesn't have a web page set up because there's nothing to configure. If you go into your user portal and you go to the order page, there's a section there to order the FaxNable devices. When you do that, you will select uh, a DID that you want for the fax enabled device. That day, as long as, as long as you order it before about four o'clock, three o'clock mountain time, it will ship out that day and you'll have it within a day or two. When you plug it in, it will work. And it will already be configured on the DID that you selected and you are ready to make and receive faxes immediately. So there's basically zero configuration on fax enable once you create or once you place the order for it and select the DID. Talk enable, uh, to, to configure talk enable, uh, again, it's using 3CX, which has a really, really nice 
web interface for managing all of the features. And, you know, I may do a little plug here. If you go to 3cxbook.com, I actually wrote uh, a book on 3CX because I'm a big fan of it. So uh, it's actually a, a fairly simple platform to use. Uh, I'll just put a, a link. It's, if you just go to 3cx.com, you can uh, see it. You can uh, look at some videos that they've done on it so you can see which really works well. And... Um, Kind of get a feel for it. There's also a demo that you can download and just throw it on any Windows machine so you can really get a feel for working with the 3CX product. Now, if you don't want to do customer premise, we of course have our PBX hosting options here at Vitality and we can put up a machine for you in our data center running 3CX or free PBX or any of the other um, like uh, what's free PBX, what's it? Oh, Elastics, you know, or some other different options that are available. Uh, Joshua, if you're back here, there's a question: Which patent product supports two lines for doing alarms uh, that can have really good reliability? Uh, if you don't need any router function on on that, and you already have a router in your edge device, it would be the 4112. I'm going to go ahead and. Um, just write that in here and then link to our product page. There you go. All right. Are there any other questions on any of the enabled products here? I know we kind of run through these fairly quickly so that we don't spend a lot of your time getting up to speed on, on the different things. We, we try and keep these webinars short, sweet, to the point, and make sure that you, you learn one good thing every month about the products and services that we offer. Again, you can go back through the Vitality blog. You can find the last uh, four or so webinars that we've done on the different products. We've done stuff on our API, on SMS, on faxing, and our PBX hosting. So uh, we're trying to make sure that you have all the information that you need to be as successful as possible out there when you're trying to, to work with our products and services. Ah, okay, Roger, can, can I give a quick opinion on 3CX compared to Elastics? Um, okay, so 3CX is a, a Windows-based product versus Elastics being a Linux-based product. So if your core competency is in Windows, you might be a better fit for 3CX than something that's based on Linux in terms of management, in terms of backing it up, in uh, terms of managing updates and things like that. Uh, Windows may be a more comfortable operating system for you. I think in terms of the interface, I really like the interface on 3CX. I think it's laid out very logically. I think it's easy to use. It's very feature rich in, in terms of comparison. There's things that Elastic does better. There's things that 3CX does better. I think they're both really great products. You're going from Elastics, which is an open source product. There is some commercial support for it, um, but it's you know it's still an open source product, and there's there's a lot of it to, to put together on there. You put it in now. You've got an operating system that you might not be super familiar with. Uh, 3CX is a commercial product, so there is a cost to it. The cost, I think, is extremely reasonable for the feature set that you get. It also has a, a desktop client that they call My Phone, which I think that really separates 3CX from the open source products in that you have full call, call control, putting people on hold, parking, transferring, access to your voicemail, being able to chat with other people in the organization. If you have multiple PBXs, they can all be shown in there so you can see who's online at different offices, uh, make it very easy to communicate with people. I find when I don't have a product like that, I spend a lot of time just trying to track people down. With a product like 3CX with the desktop client, I can very easily see, oh, they're available, they're sitting at their desk, uh, they haven't timed out, or you know, so I know they haven't gone to lunch or something, and I can just chat with them 
and they can get back to me without me trying to track people down. So I really think that the value proposition there for 3CX is quite high. So it's uh, I, I'm a big fan of it. I, I use it in my house. I've installed a bunch of systems with it. So personally, I am a, a really big fan of 3CX. Let's see. Blake is asking, will audio codes or Sangoma be supported by SIP Enable in the future? Well, the SIP Enable name is associated with the patent products. Um, we may do some uh, configuration tools to help with audio codes or Sangoma in the future. The, the problem is they've, they've changed stuff on us a few times, making it a little difficult to actually create those configuration tools. But uh, we really are big fans of the patent products, and so we decided just to, uh, for the time being, the SIP Enable name is tied directly to the patent products because we got it up and running. It works great. We've had fantastic success with it. The resellers have been extremely happy with the products. So uh, if we do configuration tools for the other ones, they won't be called SIP Enable because that's specific to the patent line of products. Uh, let's see, Bill, does SIP Enable have Fax Enable built in or how does faxing work? Uh, SIP Enable is to take a, a SIP trunk into a legacy phone system. You have an, an older Avaya system or Shortel or Mitel or whatever it is that doesn't support uh, SIP trunks. You can take the SIP Enable product and put it in front of that PBX and then connect directly to our SIP trunk. The SIP Enable is specifically for uh, working with older phone systems. Fax Enable is a different device that is specific for faxing. Uh, Aaron, what is the pricing for additional phones? Ah, that's a good question. And I just had that here. If you give me a minute, I can actually try and find it here. Um, now, the pricing that I'm going to give you on these is going to be if you buy it at the at the time of the original purchase. Uh, otherwise, you know, we can't do uh, you know some really cool pricing on it. Let's see here. The Snom 710s are about a hundred dollars, which is about thirty dollars off. The 720s are about 195 which is about uh, $25 off. And the SNOM 760s are about 275 which is about $40 off. So by buying those at the, the time of purchase, we can actually do some pretty good deals. Um, if you are going to buy more than uh, you know two or three at a time, we can probably even uh, give you some better discounts on those. Uh, okay, let me get back. I can here to jump in here and and answer Mike's question. He's asking where can we find white papers or config info for SIP Enable. Oh uh, yeah. As Terry mentioned, they have a tool which fantastically configures the gateway to just work with their chunks. I'm going to send you a link, Mike, to the full configuration guide of the Patent Smart Nodes. But keep in mind, for the simple trunks to registering the Vitality, they have a tool where it'll generate a config for you. And I believe that's just vitality.com slash SIP enable, right, Kerry? Yeah. Uh, there's lots of, uh, lots of information on the Patent website, uh, all kinds of white papers and then things. The config info is just dead simple. If you go to vitality.com slash SIP enable, you put in the IP address, you put in your credentials, it gives you a config file. Super, super simple. Uh, you know, I kind of joke about it and say if you've ever tried to configure one of these devices manually, your eyes will start to bleed at some point. Uh, it's a very big uh, config file. Now, someone like Joshua can do it blindfolded, but, you know, the rest of us kind of struggle with these config files which is why we created that web configuration tool. It is just dead simple, and literally you can get one of these devices up and running with our service in less than a minute. Uh, it's very, very easy. Uh, let's kind of go back to some of these other questions here. Greg's asking, what would you recommend as the smallest data service for SIP Enable or Talk Enable? 
out. This is really going to be dependent on the number of concurrent calls that you have. And if you kind of overestimate it a little bit, uh, if you figure it's going to take about 100K per phone call, that'll tell you how many concurrent calls you can get and provide you just a, a little bit of room for overhead. So if you are trying to do five concurrent calls, you're going to need at least uh, a 512K connection. If uh, you know, you're trying to do 50 concurrent calls, well, you're going to need a really, really big pipe. So uh, if you kind of estimate it at 100K per phone call, that'll tell you about how many concurrent calls you can do. Uh, Thomas is asking, when using fax enable on the unlimited plan, can inbound faxes be delivered to email or viewed through the, the portal? Uh, they don't get delivered to email, they get delivered to the device, but you can view them in the portal. So you still have the archiving of your faxes in the portal, but they're delivered to the device, not to, to email. Uh, can you use one of your DIDs not currently being used by VFAX on fax enable? Uh, if it's a voice DID, then you just need to tell us so that we can move that over to the fax platform and then we can uh, utilize that with fax enable. If it's uh, an existing DID that you have that's not with Vitality, we can port that number over to the, the fax platform. Uh, okay. Um, it's a, it's a question here about T38. Uh, we do not support T38. Uh, it's been a, uh, we, we definitely researched it for a long time. We did a lot of testing with T38 and in, in our opinion, it just was not as reliable as it should be because all the endpoints basically need to be the same, and it's just, it became a real nightmare trying to work with T38. So we looked around for different options, and we came up with uh, this different way of doing it that is the most reliable thing that we could find. What we did is we set up a fax machine in um, on a phone number in Alaska and did overnight faxing of an 80-page fax to Colorado using the, the fax enable products, and we never had a single page failure. So n we never had anywhere close to that kind of reliability with any other fax over IP type of product. Uh, let's see. Joshua, maybe you can help me with this one. How would hunt groups work over SIP enable? Does the device just deal with them? As DIDs are multi-channel and a legacy PBX normally isn't as they use rollover lines. Okay, so let me, let me read through this. Okay, so uh, on the patent gateway, it's pretty simple to create the hum groups and have it so that it's continuously going to try. Uh, the question would be how the um, the setup is on, on your trunks, Carrie. So when you have multiple DIDs, do you have multiple registrations, or is it a single one? It's a single registration. Then it's going to be pretty seamless as far as, as rolling over. Um, it, would, it would just be automatic. And if I recall the... Um, the the other way going to the ISDN, it's going to automatically try every port um, because our, our gateways go from one to four ports. So when I made the config for that template, it's just going to try every one to to figure out which one it has connection on. Okay. Um, now, also Joshua, uh, in terms of this other question from Blake about configuring a 24 port device. Uh, if I remember right, our configuration tool will actually create one that will work with that. Isn't that correct? Yeah, I think we went all the way up to 32. Yeah, yeah the way so, we built it, um, the SKUs or, or the, the, the actual SIP enable SKUs that we're offering are just to simplify the buying process. We're just taking um, 
the, the three SKUs that we see covering 90% of applications, but we have gateways that go from one all the way to 32 analog ports and then TRIs that go from one to, to 120 voice channels. Um, so what we did with the config tool is they will cover the SKUs that are SIP enabled SKUs, but if you got some other patent gateway, um, it's going to just basically you select FXS or PRI and it's going to uh, do a fully loaded configuration onto the patent smart node. So um, really just select FXS or PRI and it's done. Yeah, we, we tried to make it as simple as possible uh, because we knew people would do different configurations, but uh, you will have no problem just taking that device using our configuration tool and going from there. Uh, a lot of times people don't buy the devices through Vitality, maybe they already have a good deal going through ABP Tech or some other distribution channel, and they get the devices and they still use our tool to create the configuration files because it's so simple to do it that way. So it should be any device, uh, should work fine. Uh, Greg, uh, you're asking, is the patent voicemail HIPAA compliant? Are you talking about the voicemail that's in the in the 3CX software? Uh, if so, I don't really know what the answer to that is off the top of my head. Um, I've been dealing a lot with HIPAA compliance with faxing, and so long as you're using the fax-enabled device, uh, it's HIPAA compliant because it's over an encrypted connection. But I don't believe that uh, the 3CX voicemail is encrypted, so I'm not sure that that's HIPAA compliant or not. I'm not familiar with the HIPAA rules for voicemail. If, if I recall, uh, Gary, the, the HIPAA voicemail is only about when it's being transferred. So I think you're allowed to store locally on... A unencrypted, but then of course your device has to be secured somehow. Well, I think we can probably reach out to, to Brian Conway and, and get a real answer to him on that. So, if you're if you're using a phone that's connected to 3CX using like SRTP, then you have an encrypted connection to the phone. So as long as you listen to it from there, it's encrypted. Therefore, that would be HIPAA compliant. But if you had the voicemail file sent to you via email, that would not be. Is that kind of the way you would understand that? That is my understanding, correct. Okay. So uh, hopefully, Greg, that answers your question. And you said correct. So good. <laughs> I love it when we get something right. Uh, does Vitality have plans to support Canadian service for VFAX in the future? Um, we absolutely hope that we are going to be rolling out Canadian service in the near future. I just don't have an ETA on that yet. A lot of it has to do with our fax provider, and we, they've been very slow on bringing up Canada. So I don't have a, an answer on that yet. Uh, see, Mike's asking, do you have to stack two four-port gateways for SIP enable in order to get eight lines, or do you have an eight-port unit? We do have an eight-port unit. Again, to clarify, our analog gateways go from one to 32 ports, um, and we have one or four PRI. Um, again, it's just we're kind of, kind of simplifying the SKUs by offering SIP enable four, SIP enable 15, SIP enable 30, but if those don't fit your needs, we have gateways that span uh, more than that. So. Okay, Mike, hopefully that answered your question there. Uh, I think we got everybody. If we missed any questions, uh, be sure and throw it out there be, before we uh, keep going here. Let's see. Is it possible to use a VFAX DID for voice calls on an occasional concurrent call limit? Um, well, it's not against our terms of service, but those are two different platforms. So you cannot receive voice calls over a VFAX DID, and you, we don't send faxes over a voice DID. They're two completely separate platforms, so um, they, they, they don't work interoperably like that. Now, with our voice service, you should have enough uh, channels available. Uh, if you're running out of channels that are coming in, you can open up a ticket and we can increase the number of channels that can come in on that one DID. So it's not limited by to one call 
per DID, it's we usually uh, allow up to about 10. So if you need more capacity on that, just let us know and we can increase your call capacity. Okay, hopefully, uh, we again, we've got everybody there. If not, you know, feel free. We can continue to answer questions here for a little while. Um, next webinar is October 16th, and we will go over our other product called MyScribit. This is a voicemail transcription service for PBXs. So if you have a phone system, and I mean any phone system, that can send voicemail via email, then you can use MyScribit to have that phone, uh, that recording transcribed into text and then sent to you either SMS or email along with the original file. So if, if you can't make out something that they said, you can always listen to the file. Now, right now, uh, and for a, a limited time, probably about the next 90 days, MyScribit is free. So if you go to MyScribit.com and sign up now, start trying it, and you'll have the service for the next few months at no cost. Um, I know Joshua uses MyScribit. I use it. Uh, people over at TMC use it. I mean, we have a lot of people who just love using MyScribit. Uh, and in the webinar, we'll talk about not just the retail side, but the wholesale side and how you can go about reselling the service and what that means to you in, in terms of a reseller and how you can sell this service to your customers. But I highly recommend you go to MyScribit.com, set up an account for yourself, see how it works, and start trying it out. Once you start going transcription, you will never go back. So it's uh, quite a cool product. Another question from Thomas here. Do faxes have to be printed out or delivered to the fax machine through Faxnable? Uh, reason I ask, can we just view them online? Uh, today, the answer is the faxes get sent directly to the Faxnable device, which get printed out on the fax machine. Um, it's, it was just as the, the original design of the product was to let people use a fax machine with no learning curve. So uh, that's kind of what it's for. You can view them online, and we've had a lot of requests for other options for that so that you could turn off sending them to the device or uh, other features. So we will be expanding on the Faxnable product uh, over time. We've, we're doing some work right now to enable the second line on that device so that you can have two fax machines connected to it. We're looking at some high density de devices that can have four, eight, or even 16 fax machines on it. So we are constantly working on the, the Faxnable platform to, to see where we can take it. Uh, Laura's asking, does it only transcribe voicemails that are in English? And yes, the answer today is uh, it's in it's in English. Uh, they are working on some other uh, options for uh, other languages, but I'm not really sure when those will be available. Uh, Mike, if um, you give us a call, I'm, I'm going to, in fact, since he's not on the call here, I'm going to put Scott's email address right here in the chat. So Scott is the head of our sales department. He's our executive VP of sales and marketing. And if you email Scott, he will help you out with any pricing on any of these things that you need, any of the devices, so that uh, we can get you exactly what you need. I don't have all the prices right here in front of me. Uh, Blake says, uh, thanks. Is that only for a single DID spread across all 32 lines? Um, yeah, if you have, I mean, you can have multiple DIDs attached to a single registration. So you could then, you know, use your PBX and have everybody in the office have their own uh, phone number. You can have a single DID with up to 32 lines coming in on it. So you have a, a variety of different ways that you can utilize the service with either a single or multiple DIDs, and they'll all work just fine with the SIP enabled devices. So uh, again, once you have it configured, it's pretty seamless 
to the operation, the PBX doesn't even know that it's not uh, a bunch of lines coming in. It, it works very, very seamlessly. So I think we've answered all the questions. Uh, Joshua, thanks for joining. Tyler, again, thanks for joining as always. Of course. Uh, and uh, if you have any other uh, you know, questions, feel free to contact either us here at Vitality, the guys at Patent. Uh, um, they've got some fantastic customer service over there, the best in the industry. Um, Okay, so Tyler just threw out it's 570 bucks for the 8-port FXS uh, to answer a question from Mike. So, again, guys, thank you so much for joining. We really appreciate it. We, you know, we're here to help you build your business with all the different products and services that we, hear, that we have here at Vitality. Thanks for joining, as always, and hopefully we will send, uh, catch you next month. Oh, uh, Tyler, Joshua, do you want to – there you go. Well, there's Joshua's and Tyler's email addresses. So you can contact them directly. How's that for service there, Mike? Okay, again, thanks for joining. We'll catch you next month.